If you are a pentester or a bug bounty hunter, you surely have faced one of the most frustrating things that could ever happen. For instance, you send a harmless payload to a website and you see that maybe you find a critical vulnerability. But the thing is, when you send the payload, you get blocked by a web application firewall. In today's video, we are going to talk about techniques on how to bypass web application firewalls such as Cloudflare by finding the origin IP of your target. And also, we are going to talk about a tool that I created to help you find those kind of vulnerabilities. A WAF stands for Web Application Firewall. Basically, the job of a WAF is to log and filter every malicious request that you send to a website. One of the major vendors in the industry is Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a web infrastructure and web security company that does a lot of different services such as anti-DDoS, CAPTCHAs and also web application firewall. Uh, so my name is Tobias, I'm a solution engineer. It is like a pre-sales guys on technical stuff. My goal is to analyze uh, the customer need and try to offer uh, a match with Cloudflare solutions. So basically Cloudflare is a cybersecurity company with a mission to help to build a better internet. By better we mean more secure, uh, more reliable. Web application firewalls like Cloudflare services are acting as reverse proxies. Basically, a reverse proxy is a server that sits in front of the servers that you want to contact. So, in other words, when you send a request to your target, you will go through a proxy that acts like some kind of middleman. Basically, Cloudflare's WAF is based on a reverse proxy. Uh, it means that the DNS resolution will point your website uh, to a Cloudflare IP, uh, which is a global anicast network, so basically you are um, directed to the closest points of presence and on that points of presence uh, we will apply the WAF, the Web Application Firewall. So when a company uses Cloudflare services, they need to point the domain name to one of Cloudflare's IP. Sometimes company will forget to actually disable all the traffic that is not going through Cloudflare. And by finding the original IP, which means the IP that is not Cloudflare, you will be able to directly contact the web server and to bypass all the different protection. What we call origin is a, the real HTTP server serving the website or the API. And so Cloudflare really sits in the middle between the end users and your server will intercept all requests, this is the reverse proxy, and if it's good to go, we will replay the HTTP request to your HTTP server. If the attacker is able to just work around Cloudflare, go beneath Cloudflare and just reach di directly your HTTP server, you believe you are protected because you have Cloudflare, but in fact, if you did not secure your origin, we call that secure the origin, then the attacker is able to just bypass Cloudflare completely and you have a false sensation of security, but in fact you are absolutely not secured. And for an attacker to verify this issue is quite simple. All they need to do is to find an origin IP candidate. Once they have an IP that can be the web server backend, they just need to send an HTTP request to the backend with the host header of their target. If the web server responds to the exact same request, they might have managed to bypass Cloudflare. And at this moment, the attacker might be able to bypass all the different services such as anti DDoS attack, anti boating and also the WAF. And you know, there are many, many different techniques in order to find the origin IP. For instance, one technique will be to actually use the favicon.ico file of the website. Basically, a favicon will be, for instance, the logo of the website that will show up in the top of the tab. Each favicon, in general, are unique for a company. And that means that you can be able to determine the hash, which means the unique ID of the image, and to browse it on different tools. 
For instance, one of the major tools to do so is Shodan. On Shodan, you can use some kind of docking technique in order to search for Favicon Ash and find maybe the origin IP of the web server that you are targeting. But my favorite personal techniques is to actually use security trail services. From a bug hunter standpoint, security trails is an amazing tool. There is such a lot of different services, such as if you want to find the IP addresses of your target, if you want to find other subdomains, and also the most important feature for me, the historical data of your target. And what is amazing is that they have a lot of different data points, which means that you can actually get pretty deep in your reconnaissance. And you know, they're also sponsoring today's video. So basically, they gave me access to their tool in order for me to proof of concept in my own reconnaissance methodology. And one of my favorite features on security trails is the historical data API. This API actually allows you to send a domain and to check all the IPs they were referencing in the past until today. So, do you see where I'm going with this? Imagine if a company were to migrate to Cloudflare and they actually forget to configure it properly to only allow Cloudflare's traffic. Which means by that, you could actually try to find the origin IP of your target. There is a lot of different tools that actually help you to find the origin IP. For instance, there is Cloudflare that helps you find the origin IP through Census APIs, or there is also Cloudflare that allows you to find the IP by subdomain brute forcing. Even though all those great tools exist, I wanted to automate my process to find the origin IP with security trails. And you know, it seems kind of logical. Why should I continue to test manually for something that I could automate for my bug bounty reconnaissance? And that's why I created a tool called CF Bypass that actually pull data from security trails API and then check if you can find the origin IP of your target. I tried to make the tool as simple as possible. Basically, once you're done with your reconnaissance, you enumerated all the subdomains, you check all the web server, and you also check all the technologies that is running on the web server, you'll need to isolate each web server running Cloudflare. And then you can just pipe all the hosts running Cloudflare to the tool. The tool will automatically pull the data from security trails and check all the IPs you can find for one domain. If the conflict lens is quite similar, while doing a request through Cloudflare and another request by the potential origin IP, then the tool will try to calculate the certainty and give you back the result. There is different level of certainty, there is certain, high and low. Since the scan is trying to actually compare the content length, there might be some false positives. That's why that you can actually still run a manual testing on it to actually check if you manage to bypass Cloudflare. Also, you can provide all the subdomain linked to your target. The tool will automatically get all the IPs for each subdomain and then try to find the origin IP of your target. I'm really looking to improve this tool in the future and I really want to thank Security Trails for providing the APIs for free for me to actually develop for the mode the tool. Okay, but now there is a big question. Is the vulnerability actually rewardable in bug booty hunting? I guess you need to try to be careful if you're just reporting that vulnerability. Because sometimes you'll find the bypass on static website there with no uh, dynamic on it. And basically the program will tell you, hey, you bypass something, but we don't care because there is no functionalities and you can't do anything with it. So it will be an informative vulnerability. But when you are on the main facing website, then there is some companies that will say, yes, you actually managed to bypass one of our security system and we do not want that, we do not want scrapping, we do not want bots on our system and we do not want you to bypass a web application firewall. In fact, it is the same severity as without Cloudflare. So if in addition of Cloudflare, you have other security features on your hardware or on your cloud hosting uh, solution, then this is the same level of security as the, what you have without Cloudflare. If you rely on Cloudflare to block DOS, DDoS, SQL injection, and you have nothing else on the origin side, the severity is very high. While writing this video, I actually reported one bypass to a company and they gave me $500 and $15 more for retesting purpose. 
but my recommendation will be to actually try to use this tool only if you have a critical vulnerability behind it. For instance, if you have SSRF, SQLE, remote code execution, or even the very famous log for shell, you'll want to try to use that tool to bypass the web application firewall and to actually attack the backend system. By enabling a bug chain like that, you will be able to send a report to high and critical if you actually found something that could not have been exploited with the WAF and then exploitable without it. So how to properly configure Cloudflare to not get that kind of misconfiguration? We have about four ways to secure the origin and all of them are valid. The most common one is to use the IP firewall at your origin. So basically, if you go to cloudflare.com slash IPs, you will get the IPv4 and IPv6 range of Cloudflare network. Uh, at your origin, you can say, you can define only HTTP requests coming from Cloudflare network or allowed to reach my HTTP server. If it comes from another IP, it is someone bypassing Cloudflare, then just block it. So this is really the default approach. It works well, it is good enough, and I really like that approach. The other one that you can do both is called Authenticated Origin Pool. It is about asking Cloudflare to send a client certificate for each HTTP request sent to the server. And so the server will be able to check that the client certificate is there in the request. So this is not the server side of the certificate, this is a client side. You can create a very specific known only by you client cert. And this is more fine, more uh, detailed than allowing all Cloudflare IPs. This is just for your host name or for this specific subdomain. Configure that in Nginx, it is about one line. So it is quite easy to set up. And just in your Nginx, you can set if the client cert is not there or if it is not valid, then just return 403 uh, forbidden and that's it. The next very easy to set up configuration is called HTTP request header modification. So this is a transform rule. A transform rule is a tool at Cloudflare that lets you modify the header of the HTTP request or the header of the HTTP response. And in that case, we would like to say if hostnames equals dub 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 dot my domain dot com, then add a header, HTTP header to the request to the origin, and that header could be x dash secret equals a random token. And last but not least, maybe the more modern way. Um, the one I, I would recommend when it's possible is called Cloudflare Channel. So the technical name of that solution is Cloudflare D, the default daemon. Cloudflare D is a piece of software. It's like, if you would like, a reverse VPN. And when it runs, it will establish a secure connection, a tunnel between Cloudflare Network and the Cloudflare D instance. And the big benefits of that is because all ingress traffic for your web server is going through that tunnel, you, you don't have to have a public IP open on port 443. You just get rid of public IP. You don't need public IP anymore. So these are the four methods uh, I would recommend to secure the origin. You can find them in the documentation, so developers.cloudflare.com. Oh, hey, I'm so happy to see you. This is actually a good sign. Lupin asked me to fill the last 20 to 30 seconds of this video with a bit of talking. And I was actually worried that maybe it's not a good video, but you being here means it was engaging. You watched until the end. Thanks so much for watching. Anyway, I needed to fill only 20 to 30 seconds. And according to my timer, I'm coming up at this time now. So I'm free. Bye.